-hmm. which is sort of counterproductive. Why did I come yeah. if I was going to watch on the TV? <laughs> right. So, <laughs> and this was mostly, I noticed that this was while wow, So gave his speech, which was in the beginning of the event. And then the event was handed off and hosted by a journalist from Chicago, I believe. His name was Clarence Page, mm -hmm. which was also very odd because this is an event concerning University of Michigan students, our issues, and it isn't very likely that he'll understand it, knowing that he's not from the sphere or the state, so, <laughs> yeah. So the rest of the event was led by him. He was the one on stage while we were voices, voicing our concerns to him. And it's and Schlissel was sitting in the audience, not really even facing us as we spoke. So it soon became clear that the purpose, what the purpose of the event was. It seemed very aimed towards publicity, making him look good, promoting the policies of his employers to show that he earned his raise that he received in September. So we were finally able to get seats more towards the end of the event when there weren't as many guards standing around. We were had to sneak in, which was not a positive experience. It's a public event. And during the, um, the audience participation, um, the audience I encountered wasn't very surprising. It sort of confirmed a lot of my suspicions. The networking event, the audience is pretty much homogenous. This is a diversity stomach, yet the faces were mostly white, mostly older. So it clearly weren't, wasn't students attending this event because also it should be noted the event was on a Tuesday at 9 a.m. when I, a lot of students are probably in class or working or have other things that they need to do. So who are they trying to bring to this event? Um, so, where were the students? And it felt like it should be mentioned that once we got in the auditorium, there were, of course, empty seats. So, yeah. Though, um, through the speakers, there was a theme between, and most of the speakers I noted were, like, were um, graduate students or adjunct professors, people like that. And overall, everyone was pretty dissatisfied. Like, the questions that we were supposed to speak on, they um, played a video that they pre-recorded earlier, replayed videos talking about giving those same statements that you saw on, this, on, the, um, on the campaign advertisements. And it was pretty general. They had very vague questions like, what do you think diversity means? Or say what you want to see in our campus in future years, things like that. And generally everyone was dissatisfied. They weren't. The people who came to speak routinely ignored the question, I noticed. We were supposed to speak out on diversity, but we did, although not in the way they intended. Uh, they wanted, like, basically people were pissed. They wanted change, well, we wanted change, and see a diverse campus and justice served. What will a diverse campus look like in 2025? Professors of color are leaving the campus, says one professor. And then the question again, what will diversity look like on the campus in 2025? A graduate student comes up talking about how her experience on this campus has been very dissatisfactory, how she's very isolated in her classes being a black woman in engineering. What do you want to see? How will diversity look like in this campus in 2025? And we asked about Detroit. Why do, you, why do you make it seem like Detroit students are unreachable? Action. That's what it looks like if you want the students here. And that simply isn't what, what's happening. You're seeing a lot of campaigns. You're seeing a lot of blanket statements, a lot of things to make us feel good without any action actually happening. And I was the last to speak. And I said, Summing up what I said, I said, if you want to see a more diverse campus or students, then you should seek them. These, these graduate faculty that are leaving the campus because they aren't being offered tenure, 
that is something that can be remedied. If you want to see this diversity, then you need to seek these students, seek these graduate, these graduate students, help them out. You recruit these students in the Detroit area, metro Detroit area, anywhere that has people that you're looking for. If you want them, then they are waiting. And his response told me one thing, that he doesn't really care about all the policies that he's preaching, everything that he says that he wants for the university. Along the lines, he said, this is um, not word for word, but he said, you can't just pick up any Detroit student off the street. Mm -hmm. And later he also referred to my comments, other banned comments, other dissatisfied students, at our opinions as subterranean opinions. He, this is what's wrong with events like this. It shows what the university really thinks of students like me, Detroit students, or other students that aren't the typical face of a college student, especially in an institution like this. His process, his comments seem to imply a lot that the process for, for recruiting a student like me or an unrepresented student is any different from a white student. It makes you wonder what is the difference between us? What is the difference between our merits? If we have the same merits, what's stopping us from coming here? And the answer is nothing. The fact of the matter is that the university isn't trying as hard as it says it is. The recent increase in minority freshman enrollment is because of, stu of the student movement and students and organizations like BAM. For a long time, there has, there has been a real and growing disconnect between what the university advertises itself to be before we come in and what we encounter once we enroll. We want to challenge the campus culture that promotes silence to, to issues such as racism, sexual, sexual assault, and the hostile climate on campus for immigrant and women students. And I believe that we, as well as students, have the power to put pressure on the university.